So welcome back to YouTube and to the HT channel and finally Enzo and I are back together in a video. Yeah, it's been a while. But something big has happened. Well, apart from me. Yeah. I'm still big. This. This arrived. It's a new state-of-the-art projector from Barcag. From Barcag. Actually, it, it's only a part of the story. Let's have a look down here. This thing arrived in the mail. This is big. It's big, it, it's big in every sense, right? Yeah. It's big in size. It's big in weight. Mm. It's big it's about in... about 100 kilos. Yeah. It's it's big in implication and, and, and image quality and everything else. What is it? It's a Barco Freya. So Barco's DLP... Um, Flagship, flagship um, Ferrari, Rolls Royce, but it's a home theater projector. It's residential. It fits yeah. into Barco's residential platforms. Um, so it's not a cinema projector, it, like commercial cinema projector. It's a residential projector, which when you see it, I mean, when we see it, you know, it's gonna, I think, blow us away. Um, but yeah, amazing piece. This of is a bit like they took the ray gun at the commercial cinema and honey, I was trying to the kids type of thing. Yeah, it's a bit in a residential market. It, it's uh, I want to see. Can, big. can we open this? Let's open right, this. Up. I'll put the. So, I don't know what this is. We'll it's a uh, glass um, adapter thing. Right. All right. So I'm assuming yeah. we'll just bring this over here. You ready? Yeah. Oh yeah. All Hang right. on. I think we're, we're something. Yeah, let's turn that around. Yep. There's we'll a. Bring that over here. Hang on. There's a tray in here. Oh, oh, yeah, with the goodies. Grab, grab that. Okay. All the important stuff. Look at that. Or I come back in. How are we going to do? Okay. That's fine. We'll grab that box out of there. In case you're wondering, by the way, whilst Enzo's just sorting out the bits over there. Yep. Um, we are standing in the projection room of our new Dual Cinema Demo Complex. And uh, Enzo's got some news on where we're at with that. Yeah, so um, basically we're not too far off. There has been some delays. I know people have kind of been like, oh, you announced it in March, what's going on? Obviously COVID, uh, freight, couriers, parts. Parts have been a disaster. Um, but we're nearly there. Um, we're a couple of weeks away. Um, all the final details are in. You can see all our fabulous memorabilia and trinkets. Um, Cinema 2 is basically working. We're waiting for acoustic treatment on that. Yep. Cinema 1, we're waiting on the speakers from Wisdom to arrive by boat. Um, and Cinema 3 is in Cinema 2. Yes. We're yep. sharing. So that's a really cool thing, which we'll do a whole new video. Yep. These are hard drives. Yes. So the story behind this is that you can actually run, um, you can actually pay licensing rights to have proper films from the cinemas in yeah, your own home. Yeah. So you can sign up basically with Hollywood, you can download the movies as a, effectively a rental into your projector on the day it's released in Hollywood and it's the Hollywood cut. It is the original studio. As a print. cinema would get. Yeah, exactly as yep. a cinema would get. But you can- Five have, to 10 grand a film, isn't it? Something like that, plus there's a license fee annually, yeah. plus there's a subscription, plus everything else. Let's get the rest of this cool. done. Okay, so. Put that over here. All the bits and bobs. Hang on, I've got, I've got some more cardboard. Of that. Can I do like a magic trick? Ready? Ready? One, two, two three. three. Oh. Look at now that. That, <laughs> that is a projector. That's big. Let's get that camera into the into here. Let's have a look at that. Look at that. Look at the work in that. We'll do some. Uh, we'll you know we'll, we'll, we'll cut from this and we'll do some shots. But this thing is something else. And uh, speaking big. of the lens, where's the lens? We'll get the box. I think you've left it out there. <coughs> have we got a knife? Here you go. And this is the thing that arrived with it. Uh, let's have a look. I'll do that. Oh, look at this. Sometimes the picture say, sort of says a thousand words. I think in this case... This doesn't. <laughs> yeah. The box does. You've you got, you got to see this, right? I can't right. imagine. Ready? Ready. One, two, three. <laughs> That's big. <laughs> that is huge. Look at that. Oh, my God. 
Is that for the um, for the moon space shuttle? Oh, look at that! What? A, oh, hang on. Is that the second biggest thing you've held in your hand today? Probably. <laughs> oh my gosh, that Busy is well. look at that. just look at the detail as well. Yeah. I mean, the build quality on this thing is just phenomenal. Any <laughs> Barco product is just ridiculous. This thing is just in a league of its own. Do you want to grab that box yeah. out of the way? So, um, all right, that's the unboxing of the Barco Frey. What's this thing worth? Um, so retail is about 180 to 190 grand. Australian? Australian dollars. Yep. Um, so it's expensive, yep. no doubt about it. But, you know, our Cinema One, the reason we went for something like this is our Cinema One is going to sit around the 800 grand retail. Yep. And I know what a lot of people are going to go, oh, that's really far out of reach. It, you know, it's just about showing what we can achieve in home cinema and creating a grand experience. Plus, you know, we'd like to rent the space out. Industry people would like to use it as well. It's going to be reference standard, so people who standard. are making films will be able to come here and see films and see their dailies and rushes um, as they would in a cinema. Um, the other thing is, yeah, we wanted to set a benchmark. This is, you know, we're working on this being the best cinema room in the Southern Hemisphere, and we needed this to do it. Obviously, this isn't for everybody. Um, this is your Bugatti Veyron. It is your, you know... Rolls-Royce Phantom. Rolls it, it, it is the creme de la creme. This is the creme de la creme. Um, and, it, you know, the, the magic here is it's DCI. It's DCI rated or certified projector. Um, and uh, it, it's something else. And the irony is that Barco actually make even bigger ones than this for residential too. So They do, yeah. yeah. Um, but... You know, again, I think ever since COVID and the times that where everyone's going through, we're seeing more cinemas shut mm. and we're seeing more people building cinemas at home. Mm. Uh, and there are people out there that demand for a product like this. And I think it's even more now than ever. To be Look, I, I think, and this is an interesting topic and we're going to shoot a different video on this, but the question is, what is home cinema? <laughs> That's and just, so yes, just nuts. Feels like my son. You know, what we want people to be able to do is to sit well, in a room and experience insane. something like they haven't before. Insane. I'd like to think that, you know, home, home theatre has really become synonymous with a TV and a soundbar. Um, what we're talking about is building cinemas in people's homes. It's what we've been doing for a long time. And uh, this is just, this is a stratospheric step into mm. delivering cinemas for people who want those in their home. Uh, but our, ca our catchphrase is always we build Hollywood reference studio cinemas. Absolutely. And yeah. this is no, this is, this is it. This is it. So this um, is it. We, we can't wait to see this. So uh, stick around and we'll go through this in a bit more detail. And we'll also do some, uh, some footage of it when it's installed in place. And there's a bit of a trick to the installation as well, which we'll show you once we get that sorted too. So that's the unboxing of the Barco Freya DCI projector. In, in very impressive. I, I'm blown <laughs> away. This thing is... This, and just the detail too. Else. I mean, what's in there is just... You could look at it all day. Yeah, I, it's I'm... crazy. Yeah, it's like... It, you know what it's like? It's like lifting the bonnet on a really exclusive vehicle and just going, wow. But pff, Crazy. Well, we're going to get this onto a bench. We're going to spin it around a bit. So stick around, guys. We'll get some we'll, close-ups. We'll be back in a second. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about this amazing projector, the Freya. Um, so Barco has a history of choosing their names from gods. Yes. Yeah. Um, Freya is um, the wife, the the wife of Odin, and, and the mother the of Balder. Mother of Balder, yeah. Yeah. So obviously, you know, that's where they get their names. Some people have asked us that in the comments, um, and I think that speaks to you know where they place these the power. In, in their architecture as yeah. well, and the you know the power and and the awe of these products, and they are. In every sense of the word, you know, we use the word awesome a lot these days, mm -hmm. but these things are awe-inspiring. Yeah. They're amazing. Well, we had um, a chat with the guys at Barco, which you'll see in a video, whether it's before or after this one, um, about, you know, the one thing they commented on was how impressed they they even were, and they work at Barco, right? Well, they've reduced, what they've done yeah. is they've taken the cooling system from a much bigger projector and the technology of a much bigger projector, and they've compressed it and designed uh, it into this housing. Now, even though this housing by normal projector standards is big, this is not big by comparison with, say, commercial mm. um, commercial installations. So they've they've been able to, uh, within reason, miniaturise that technology and get it into here. That makes this a very, very, very powerful unit. And in, in terms of power too, 
the light output on this is such that this is the first projector we've ever had where we have an HSE or health require, health yep. and safety requirement yep. on installation. We cannot have anyone pass within a metre of the front of this lens at least. In our cinema we've actually had to design a spot where pe people cannot go and make sure that they, you know, they can't look into the, uh, the lens of this thing. Otherwise, I don't know, you just... And we have, to, we have to actually draw that and send it to Barco to get approved. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, pre-COVID, they would come out normally. Barco, someone from Barco Residential Australia will come and check it off as well. Yeah. Um, but obviously, once we're finished, we just send photos and measurements and... And, and we've still them. got someone flying over to... We've still got uh, someone coming over from Melbourne, Sydney, but obviously, in Australia at the moment, COVID's running a bit wild, so we'll see how that goes. But... Um, Let's talk um, a bit of the, the nitty-gritty specs. So yep. DCI compliant? DCI compliant. Yep. So that's the Digital Cinema Initiative. What that means is that this has to meet <coughs> a certain uh, amount of uh, specifications and criteria so that you can then go to someone like Bel Air Distribution, which we are talking to this yep. week. Uh, we're very excited about that's that. Really cool. uh, we'll be talking to Julian there. Um, and that means that if you have the uh, pocketbook to get one of these put into your cinema, uh, you can then sign up with Bel Air Distribution and on the day of a cinema release in Hollywood, you get the Hollywood digital version of the print. That's the highest standard quality and resolution. It's higher than you get on a disc. It's, it's even potentially higher than you get on something like a um, Kaleidoscape. Mm, mm. Uh, and it's downloaded into here and it's yours for the, for the release period, which means you can invite your rather exclusive friends over to your home and watch a movie in your home without having to fly to uh, Hollywood yeah. or wherever for that cinematic release. Um, and there are, as I think we mentioned earlier, there are some hard drives built into the side of this and that's connected mm. online and, and, it's, and it's fed straight into here. But that also means that the DCI initiative or DCI says everything in this path has to be pristine yeah. um, so that what is delivered on the screen meets all of their requirements. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to talk about high-end cinemas here. You know, let's let's throw some rough figures. Now, let's say you decide and you've got the pocketbook to buy, whether you buy exclusive cars, exclusive homes, or exclusive cinemas. If you're building an exclusive cinema, let's, let's lo use a loose figure. Let's say a million dollars, mm -hmm. right? Um, my first question is, what is a cinema? Well, ultimately, it's, it's uh, an amazing picture and amazing sound. That's what a cinema is. A car is amazing performance, you know, whether it's acceleration or cornering or, or you know, handling or uh, downforce, for example. Um, you know, one of the things that boggles my mind is that, you know, why on earth would you build a cinema at a million dollar price point and put in something like, you know, a, 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 what is effectively a, a more of an entry level projector like a uh, well, even anything that's it from like ten thousand dollars to thirty thousand, yeah, yeah, doesn't really suit. The well, it's not DSI compliant, and it's not DSI compliant. It doesn't have the dynamic range in this. No. It doesn't have the optical no. accuracy. I mean, look at the lens on this thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you put let's let's take uh, BenQ X twelve thousand H, which we love, yeah, fantastic and for its price projector. for its price, yep. an amazing piece of gear. Yeah. But in a million dollar cinema, that is one point six percent of the cost of your cinema. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, seriously, what are you doing? You know, if you're turning mm. to professionals to get your cinema Spec built, put in a professional grade well, that's projector. A that's know. a little bit like if you bought a Ferrari and they put a four cylinder in it and ran it off like a fuel pump that's in a Toyota Corolla or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Um, yeah it, it just doesn't make sense, especially when the two most important criteria are picture and sound. Mm, mm, you know, if you're going to mm. elevate your room, this is how you do it. It's a fair this comment. is what you do. Yeah. Uh, but also, this needs professional design. It needs professional installation. Um, the other thing is, and this is really important, most projectors end of life fairly quickly, mm. right? So, yeah. you know, and, and actually the, the uh, X12000H is great. We love it. You know, we had a big part to play in putting that projector on the map. Um, and, you know, we think it's fantastic. But it's just been announced. It's end of yeah, life. Yeah, end of life right. recently. No more firmware. So. You know, in, in time that you might have difficulty with parts uh, and, and so on and so forth. We think they're amazing. Mm. We love them. But Barco is in a different league and the price point on this uh, puts it in a position where Barco stand by this for a very long time. And uh, this is not going to get end of life for years and years and no. years and years and years. And, and it's not just BenQ. I mean, even like a 
No, it's, Sony it's, recently it's, superseded their their two seventy to a two ninety, their five seventy to five ninety. I mean, this happens all the time in in the ever growing every twelve month competitive uh, marketing competitive mass market. This world. happens yeah. all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, the first thing I know people are gonna start saying is, well, that's all we can afford. I mean, that's the realistic market that we live yeah. in. Yeah. But in what Andrew's saying is, someone that buys a boulder today um, is the same as someone who bought a boulder five years ago. Because that boulder from five years ago gets its updates and gets the support from yeah. Barco, right? Yeah. So, and, and that's an investment. And, and that's they're, they're really designed very money. much with this long life mm. in mind, as opposed to marketing needs a new model next year. And that's just not the way, you know, it happens mm. with Barco. So I, I just wanted to touch on that. If you are building a million dollar cinema and you came to us because we build amazing cinemas, um, you know, at that kind of price point, we would be putting in this kind of projector, mm. we would be putting in uh, pro or yep. audio, or we would be putting in uh, wisdom, wisdom audio, or yep. we would, you know, and, and of course, Trinov and so on and so forth. Uh, not, not the sort of stuff that, it, off the well, shelf. you know, I mean, we would like to have this in a home. It probably won't happen. Um, mm. And, you know, that's the other thing too. People also accuse us of, you know, oh, you're expensive. No, we're not. We actually work, we've worked with people on much, much lower budgets. We've done rooms for $20,000. Um, and you can do amazing rooms. It's not necessarily mm. in the equipment at the price point, it's in the implementation and the way the room's designed and set up. Um, but much like watching Top Gear, you know, I love to watch Top Gear. I like to look at the Bugatti Veyrons and all of the exclusive supercars. Will I own one? I doubt it. But, you know, that would be nice. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, that's what we're getting at. For those of you who are in this league, you know, be very careful about what goes into your room. Make sure you're talking to the people who are talking about the right products. Okay, so again, Barco, uh, Mad VR, Trinov, and, and, and so on. Okay, yeah. enough of that. So you mentioned light output before, RGB yes. laser. Yes. So the it's like 90, what is it, 98? 98.5% of the BT2020 color space. an impressive number. In every respect, you know, yeah. and if you've watched my video on color space, you know, uh, you know, uh, this thing actually has very high, um, uh, not only uh, in terms of saturation and hue, but in terms of luminance. This is a very, very accurate, very amazing projector. Now, obviously, it's not installed yet. It's actually going up here, and there's a mirror and a few tricks that we're using to get the light into the room. Yep. And once we've got that up, we will get some images. But, of course, you know, it's always difficult with a camera to represent what this <coughs> thing looks like. We can't wait. The other thing too is optics. Now, I'm going to shoot another video on some comparisons. We've got a Bragi in there. In fact, we've got five projectors in that room now. Um, but we're going to do a comparison. And one of the things that's really noticeable, and, and my video is going to be on what is the best uh, image combination under $100,000. Um, and, you know, for my mind, a bit of a spoiler here, it is the Bragi with the Mad VR. Uh, so, you know, that is a picture that is, I mean, you know, it's very, I, it's very. I was looking at the convergence issues, right? So convergence is when you're trying to line up your red, green, and blue panels, and um, all of them have to line up to make a white pixel. Um, and Sony, whilst they make great projectors, the optics in the Sony is such that as you get out from the centre, you've got a nice clean line in the middle of the picture, and it gets out to the edge. When you put the Bragi on or something like this, the optics are a world apart. I mean, just you know, take a look at this lens, right? This thing is is phenomenal. Um, and this makes up, would I say about 10% mm. of the cost yeah, yeah. Of, of the entire projector. Yeah. There's a lot of investment and technology in this lens. And the optics are such that your picture is pinpoint accurate, pinpoint accurate on any location on that screen. It, it's phenomenal to see. This thing is the same. So. Um, obviously HDMI 2.0, 2.2. HDCP 2.2. Yep. Um, and I mean, connectivity wise, you guys can see, and we did some pan shots before, but it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and how, I mean, the fact that touching back on, it needs professional installation. Um, it's not something that, I mean, it's a hundred kilos. Um, we're going to get up there. Um, you know, it, it's, it doesn't go on a ceiling mount. It doesn't go on a ceiling. Well, not not the ceiling mounts that you'd see on yeah, your average yeah. projector. But um, there are there are suspension points on the top yep. here, by the way. Which are, yeah. um, power handling. This thing has uh, several options. It's sixteen amp single phase, um, mm, two forty yeah. volts in, in Australia, and uh, there's a three phase um, option as well. So um, you can run this on either power. So in a, in a I guess more slightly sort of a larger cinema installation or 
if you've got three phase power available, that would make this thing just a bit more efficient. Um, so, <laughs> so there's that. Um, it's not noisy. I think from memory, it's about 50 dB. Um, it's noisier than your average projector, but look at it. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's why also it's outside of our cinema and is going through a, uh, a glass portal, um, much like a very real commercial yeah. cinema. Yep. So, yep. Um, what else? What have we got? Um, no, look, I mean, well, I think we touched on a lot of it. Um, we're, you know, going to try and get this set up. We're going to get a, another video, obviously, showing once it's set up. We have a bit of trickery trying to get it into the room. Yeah. Um, but look, I mean, just the, the sheer quality, the build quality, I mean, that lens alone is it's just so, so oh, heavy, oh. but at the same time, it just looks and feels like a million bucks. It is just, yeah, they put a lot of effort. And you know, the thing is with the lenses on Barco, if you do move house for some reason, and the new owner doesn't want the cinema, you can move the projectors to another room and all you have to do it's is changed, change yeah. the lens. I think we've said this before. So... You know, if it's a bigger room, you change the lens. If it's a smaller room, you change the lens. So, but the lens actually have quite a good um, um, shift. Right, right. So, so it's a decent range, and the shift the shift is ridiculous. Like fifty five percent or yeah, something. Yeah. It's you know, um, which is well, a lot. The Barco uh, Barco Bragi in our um, cinema well, two room, yep. uh, is the highest um, projector in the room. It's got a lot of shift on it, and mm. the picture is still absolutely pin sharp. I mean, and that's the sort of thing that you're getting for your money. Um, <coughs> So the other thing is, very quickly, access on this unit is incredible. The panels do come off and on really easily, so just like that, and back, and so you've got very quick access to anywhere on here, yep. should you need to. Uh, pulse platform, Andrew's the expert on pulse platform. This, this is not pulse. No. No, so the Bragi um, and most of the um, non-DCI projectors run on a pulse platform. This has a different user interface. Again, it, it tends more towards a commercial cinema <coughs> kind of thing, um, but that's all part of the DCI compliance. DCI compliance doesn't allow it to have things like the warp engine, which is built into the Bragis and the boulders and so having, on. So having to manipulate Yeah, energy. this is a pure <coughs> cinema projector. The boulders and the Bragis um, are designed for multiple use. You can use them for modern art. Um, you can wrap the image around things, you can distort the image, you can fire the image off at 45 degrees basically, and we've done that, you know, it's quite mm. incredible. If you have an awkward installation, a, a uh, Barco projector with the Pulse platform and their, their warp engine is, is what you need. Um, DCI says no, this thing has to be just cinema, that's it, nothing else, that's what it does. And it does it phenomenally mm. well. It's a bit like asking your um, Bugatti Veyron to be, you know, a better off-road than a Mercedes G-Wagon. So, you know, they're, no. they're not the same. Um, before we spoke about light output, it's about seven and a half thousand, yeah. which is a, which is a light cannon. And being, um, um, some people always ask about the lumens, like two thousand lumens, for instance, in a glow projector is very different to two thousand lumens in a laser projector. Yeah, and again, we won't dwell on that, but that's got to do with the. Um, uh, luminance of each of the mm. primary colours um, and again we've got videos on that so uh, that way we don't have to talk about that. But yeah, light cannon. Yeah, this is amazing. So look, um, what can we say? We'll have this thing installed, we'll yep. have some photos of it once it's installed and we'll shoot another video of the room with this thing up and running. Um, but we are very, very excited. We would also like to say thank you to um, Peter and Claver, to Andy and Bart at um, Barco Residential. Barco Residential. Um, the support, the, you know, uh, everything that we've received from them has been fantastic. Um, their technical guys are brilliant. Um, they help us make sure that we do this perfectly, and that's, you know, part of what we do, but we can't do it without them. And uh, in Australia, with uh, Peter and Claver behind us, you know, this thing is unstoppable. Um, so, look, we, we appreciate, you know... Hopefully you see this, uh, for those of you who, who can't afford this, and let, let's be fair, you know, that's a lot of us. Um, hopefully this is a bit like watching Top Gear. We can ooh an hour over it and go, gosh, I wish I had one. Um, and for those of you who are the sort of people who are going to build that kind of cinema, then give us a call and we will get our teams, you know, ourselves, uh, Barco, Wisdom, Pro, Trinov, they all come together to deliver the ultimate in picture and sound, directly from Hollywood, straight into your home, exclusively for you and your friends. That's it, guys. So we'll be back soon, and uh, bear with us. It's been a very intense oh, and, few and, months. And sorry, and 
and Bel Air, of course. Oh, and Bel Air, of course. Um, it's been a you know intense couple of months with some delays and bits and bobs, but you know with this this is nearly finished and we'll be back and we'll be a lot more regular on YouTube. So uh, thank you very much again, Andrew. Appreciate always, it. Always. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, and uh, you know to all of you out there, thank you. And look, please, if you could help us out, if you're enjoying our videos, please make a point of hitting the subscribe button. That's really important for us. Um, without the subscriptions, um, you know, we have to judge whether or not it's worth doing YouTube videos. They take a lot of our time up. Um, they're, you know, it's, it's time consuming to mm. produce and to get out there. And if we don't get any subscribers, we don't know if you're enjoying them. So, you know, do us a favor, tell your friends, punch that subscribe button, do it now, get the notifications. We then know that people want to see this stuff and we'll keep going. If not, then we're busy with other stuff and you know we'd have to give that some yeah, thought. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very, thank you very, very much. much. See you soon.